Hello and welcome to Wine Blast, the podcast that brings wine to life with me, Susie Barry, and my husband and fellow master of wine, Peter Richards, who I can see at the moment is pretty much hopping with excitement. <laughs> it's either that or you need a wee. <laughs> well, it could be both. Let's, should we not go there? Uh, no, because we're starting. <laughs> um, no, no, let's clarify. It really is just because I'm excited. I'm intrigued by it all. So, so uh, right, I'm going to just breathe. Do you want to start off? Take a, I think I better, hadn't I? Because <laughs> there's, there's too much excitement in the room. It's you're bouncing off the walls. Okay, so so we did this uh, this straw poll, a bit of fun, asking people on social media what their top three grape varieties for white wine are. Yeah, it sort of it started, didn't it, on the last podcast on South it Africa, did, yeah, where yeah, on yeah. Cape Fears, where uh, <laughs> I think Cathy Jordan had mentioned they were planting a Sirtico, and I put you on the spot. You and just totally said, put me <laughs> on the spot. You just said in the middle of recording, you know, what are your top three white grape varieties? Tell me now. And I thought, oh, panic as usual. I think and you did and, pretty well. Uh, mm, well, we'll go into that Apart later. From a few dodgy choices, but you know, no one's perfect. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we we decided to put this out on social media, and it. it Kind of went a bit mad, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. It was brilliant. I, I mean, I think, I think partly because we're all in lockdown and people are, well, we we assume like us drinking quite a lot of wine. Oh, well, um, it's, it's, we're it's also soaking in wine. Yeah, I think it is. And but we're also doing these Zoom quizzes. Well, we have. I don't know if anybody else. I think has. a lot of people have done Zoom quizzes, haven't they? Yeah. So there's nothing better, is there, than that combination of of a really good good list. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that high fidelity sort of thing, isn't it? A top, a yeah. top. Three. We all love a top three, don't and, we? And so this seemed to be. We, we think it was the the perfect activity, a bit of escapism, and um, when you've got you've got time and wine on your hands. Yeah, boy, we've got lots of that. Um, but but you know, some people found this quite hard too. Is you know, it was something mm. that actually yeah, took yeah. a lot of took a lot of energy and effort. You know, it wasn't undertaken <laughs> lightly. I think by some clearly, it sparked some sort of crisis. Among among real wine lovers, you know, right, having yeah. to narrow all these options down to just three, and, and equally, the ensuing discussion wasn't just sweetness and light, was it? No, um, no, I mean, no. I think I saw not. more of this than you because a lot you of it did, was on my. You Twitter. did it on your Twitter account, exactly. didn't you? I mean, so, so you've got someone, things to tell me. I think that, that yeah, I, I do. Still I don't do. Know. There was someone on our Instagram, but 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 a lot of it was on my Twitter. You know, we had we had fighting talk. Did we really? We had cheating. We had <laughs> we had all sorts. Cheat. There was all sorts there. You know, it did get quite messy in there at times. <laughs> But the real thing was, and I think I think the, the thing that struck us most, wasn't it, was, was that this question just really touched a nerve. It, I think. it did. It um, did. And the, you know, the discussion was fun, but it was also really divergent in terms of reactions. So that's why we thought it warranted exploring a little bit more, which is why we thought we'd do this podcast. And, and here we are. Here we are, indeed. Um, so, so we had we had some amazing <laughs> responses. I don't know them all. You uh, you've told me some of them, not all yeah. of them. We'll find out shortly. And um, but we we first of all just want to say thank you, thank you to mm. everyone who joined in the conversation uh, who shared their views we did have views from all over the world and um, we had masters of wine famous wine producers right through to just you know all of us thirsty wine lovers yeah. um, and and you know what i found so far it was just really inspiring and um, it made me think our choices were were slightly boring but mine was a bit bit uh, forced um yeah, yeah. but you know just really inspired and and we learned about grape varieties that you know frankly we we just never heard of before and inspiring is a good word inspired that's what i'm going to say i am today i'm not excited i'm not over excited no we've used excited enough i don't enough need so a wee far. i'm inspired. In, inspired we have been inspired yes. by all these lovely opinions Excellent. which is absolutely fantastic so we want to talk a bit about the the results in inverted commas uh all the things that come out of this you know for example which white grape varieties proved to be the most popular? You don't know yet. Do I don't know. No? I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm um, waiting which, to hear. Which ones caught our eye? You know, um, we're going to hear also a little bit of a sample of the opinion that was aired. You know, and catch up on the funnier comments and suggestions. And there was to, there was a fair amount of comedy, wasn't there? There was comedy. The bit, yeah, that, that's the bit I do know about. Yeah, yeah. And for example, uh, we had one great suggestion for the next poll, which was what are our worst three white grape varieties. Oh, good, good. I've got some time to think about this. Right? I'll give you a little bit of time, but we might come back to it. <laughs> Do not ask me straight on the spot. <laughs> uh, but we're also going to dive into, as it were, a couple of the grape varieties to explore them a bit more, some of the more unusual ones. We've got a we've got a bottle open mm-hmm. featuring one uh, grape variety that we're going to mention, mm-hmm. uh, which is, is, is brilliant. Uh, and I'm going to have to use the word again. Super exciting. Oh, it's exciting. Sorry, no, it is, is but it's particularly exciting because we're going to talk to Dr. José Vuillamot. 
Now, he is a grape geneticist. He is one of the world's leading authorities on grape varieties mm. and the co-author with our esteemed friends and colleagues, Jancis and Julia, of the definitive book on the subject. It's called Wine Grapes, and we'll also be referencing that a bit later. But first, first what we want to do, I think we should do, is just establish the parameters for the debate. So do you want to remind us? Sounds very posh. Sounds it does, like it does actually, the, doesn't it? Oxford yeah. Union, <laughs> What are the parameters for the for debate? The debate? Uh, Tell us, this Mr. House. Mr. <laughs> Richards, do you want to remind us of your initial um, social media post? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's I not... I think it's a fancy way of saying that. It's not really highfalutin, is it? It's just about a social media post, right? It so, mostly is. So, um, so it went like this. You know, so what are your top three white wine grape varieties? We'll go first. Susie's are Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc and Riesling. Peters are Chardonnay, Riesling and Assyrtico. What are yours? Be controversial. Our choices are boringly similar. Let's dream of those delicious weekend white wines. There we go. Um, so we did ask people to be controversial. That is did. worth bearing in mind. Yeah, no wonder we got some crazy answers. Yeah, well said. And also, I think it's fair to say, we did sort of... Um, you know, say our choices. Yeah. So, yeah. so that may have influenced things slightly. Although I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. But, but well, before we come on to the results and we talk to Jose, um, what I'd really like to do, if we can, is just share some of the funny bits. Let's come on. The funny bits were the were, were everything. <laughs> well, they, I mean, this is brilliant. So, so okay. So I've already mentioned things did get a bit feisty. Yeah. Okay. So there was talk of defending the honour of certain varieties. <laughs> you know what that means? Jewels, maybe. You know, one MW, uh, I'm not going to name names. No, I Peter bet you McCombie, are. Uh, claimed a tweet was fighting talk. You know, and one person even invited another to wash their mouth out. With white wine. <laughs> Presumably. I <laughs> actually considered that. Maybe that's another activity. That, you know. what, what, what were they talking about? I think they were talking about a Sirtico. Oh, um, really? Maybe washing your mouth out with wine. Mm. Could that replace... You know, Toothpaste. our evening routine. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, um, I questioned Ruth as well. Uh, she'd only given two options for her favourite white wine grapes, and, so, <laughs> and I said, "What? Well, well, you know, if anyone got?" She said, two's enough for white wine." Red Ruth. <laughs> Clearly, she's not a big fan of whites. <laughs> there we go. Um, and also, she went on to accuse someone else of being drunk for suggesting Fiano. Oh. <laughs> but let, let's be fair. Let's let's put the other side of the argument. There was harmony too. Uh, mm. I believe there were invitations issued to meet after lockdown to discuss further and bond over shared loves of certain varieties. Oh, that's great, In it? fact, two tweeters declared they were kindred spirits or one of a kind. Oh, oh. that's a loving, a great loving over lock uh, in lockdown. It is a great loving. Maybe we can start a relationship. You know, some sort a relationship of white service. wine grape. Really? Sort of tinder, what got you together? Tinder for for wine lovers. My love of He's... my love of um, you know, Pinot Grigio. <laughs> that sums us up, doesn't there it? There we are, there we are. That's you say uh... Grashavina, I say Pinot Grigio. Excellent. That's yep. why we're such yep. that's why we make such a good couple. <laughs> such <spirits>. Anyway <laughs> There was also cheating, wasn't there? Yeah, I mean yeah I'm not explain this cheating. Okay. How do you All cheat right. well, of three top grape writers? How do wine people cheat? That's the that's the question, isn't it? Okay, so people clearly couldn't stop themselves at, at just three. So they had to oh, find yeah. ways to shoehorn other varieties in. Okay, so uh, some people claim that blends, right, so blends of grape varieties, which is quite common, is that it qualifies as one variety. So if you happen to like a Semillon Sauvignon blend from Bordeaux or, whatever, or a Marsan Roussan blend, that, that qualifies as one variety. That's too- Two varieties. Yeah, which which that I came down quite hard on that one. Uh, and there were also lots of substitutes. So people, sort of, for example, say these are my top three, but but I have to mention this as a substitute. Football. So football so yeah, so, analogy. Well, it was a sort of football analogy, and Mark uh, even took this football analogy f- uh, further by saying that Vermentino di Galura, as if he wasn't being specific enough, was was a solid midfielder who scores from a distance. <laughs> Which I love. You know, could this footballing comparison be a thing? You know, who's your who's your you know top of the diamond? Who's your you know solid right back? I don't know. You know, maybe maybe there's something we can we can really get into that. Yeah, I mean, who knows? well, who knows? I mean, I, I, unfortunately, I, I would be slightly stuck because I'd probably I'd probably only get as far as John Terry. <laughs> Or maybe David Beckham. <laughs> All right, okay. This is our whole new programme. Who is the John Terry of wine grapes? And, and more importantly, David Beckham. You mentioned David Beckham. I did, I did. Can we I just have to. a moment? David Deep Beckham. Deep breath, David Beckham. Who's the David Beckham of wine grapes? Well, it's got to be something quite sort of showy, hasn't it? Showy. Chardonnay. Chardonnay, come on. Let's, I'm, I think we should just leave that there. And I, want, I want to hear from people. David Beckham <laughs> as Chardonnay. David, if you're out there, if you're offended... 
Her name's Susie, and I'll give you her address. But my top choice of great varieties, David, is Chardonnay. So, you know, that's true. I, I've put you high up there. Maybe I should be worried. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, we did have some complaining. Uh, one person said it was like choosing your favourite child. Well, that's easy, isn't it? <laughs> you go first. <laughs> anyway, uh, David, uh, he, he said, um, now, I don't really quite understand this, but maybe maybe you do. Um, it's like having to pick your fa- your three favourite lovers. You offend everyone. I mean, what do you understand? What do you mean by three lovers? I mean, even admitting you've got three lovers is... is I, I, th- I, think, I think the point is, is it's weird. not at the same time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on. So you assume this? You assume this is right. I am really worried now. I know uh, what you meant. I'm, you know, of, of the of the uh, of the twelve I've started, got on the go at the we moment. We started this podcast <laughs> as a way of exploring our favourite white wine, and basically now oh, I am just massively it. insecure about my marriage. Yeah. Anyway, well, sorry. That that's so no, I think it's the idea thinking, of picking, it? picking your three favourite yeah. lovers from your past. Well, you're still going to offend somebody, aren't you? Well, yeah, that's fair. I mean, seriously. Who was your favourite? Yeah. Lovers yeah. Well, let's really not go there. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, so what else did we have? Um, well, we had. We had a brilliant, uh, I think, the, the award for the most stylish off-the-cuff remark came from James Winter, lovely James, who, who when asked what his favourite white wine varieties was, said, Chackley, but only in the morning. <laughs> I <laughs> so, love it on James. So what would your early it. afternoon uh, great variety be? And equally, uh, I don't know, great varieties for the morning? Oh, well, but Prosecco for breakfast. Yeah, again. Although it's now a great limited. variety, is it? Glara. Yeah. Glara for breakfast doesn't sound quite as um, fun, does it? it doesn't, does it? Um, so Dino, Dino said, mm-hmm. actually, the the producer is more important than the variety. So that's what he went with. Yeah, he also tried to get 12 of them in. Did he? Yeah, he tried to get 12 producers. I said, Dino, that's that's Dude, not That's, that's not, not three, really the it? point, is it? I mean, well, I mean it's, got to respect he, he, has, he has got a point. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, for example, specified origins for their variety. So Sauvignon Blanc, from Sancerre or Chardonnay from Chablis, um, all of which are, are, are fair points, but missed the point. They did a little bit. Really? Yeah. But but what I want to say is that there is a really key issue in all of this. It's the most important thing about the whole idea of the top three grape varieties. It was raised by Christina and Monica. Mm-hmm. And uh, they said the key issue is we need a white wine emoji. And there we have it. That, would, it sums it all that, up, is, that it? is it, isn't it? If there's one big takeout from all of this <laughs> history of great varieties, and you know, that's it. White wine emoji. Full stop. Let's write to the White government. wine emoji. Let's get on to. Uh, let's we get do. On to, we uh, do. Let, let, let's ask. Uh, right. So before before we do that, I think we should get into to the results, shouldn't we? Oh, seriously, I want to know. Them. Okay, right. You, so you're, you know, you're the highly man unscientific with the, with the poll results. survey. Um, but the important thing was this was really close. So I'm just going to okay. whip through, let's say, our top 10. We actually we, yeah. we got 11 because we had a tie for 10th. Um, is that cheating? Well, it is in a way, isn't it? Maybe it's symptomatic of the debate. Well, so I have, got, and I haven't told you this. No, I know. I'm looking, I'm looking vaguely no, see no, your I'm piece rustling of paper my papers. I'm rustling my paper here. How I many people? Printed, I have printed out a, a results sheet. Uh, what a surprise. Look. Okay, so in joint 10th joint place were, were Furmint and Palomino. Right, good, okay. so good. I think, Love them I think both. Palomino really surprised me, but I think it's just no. I mean, of, sherry, I just because of sherry. Oh I think goodness! People are such fans of sherry, sherry, and that's the main group of sherry. Fine, yeah, yeah. So no, from sherry, it, clearly from some from... sort of Tokai fans, but also dry yeah. ferment. I think yeah. people like yeah, these yeah, days. So hungry, yeah. Number nine was Sirtico. So my shout. Mm, only got to nine. Clearly not getting a lot of love. Not, uh, not well, but, but it's not there. bad. It's I mean, in still, the top ten. Still in the top ten. Um, Semillon eighth. Yeah, fair enough. Seventh was Gruner Fedlina mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. Austria. Austrian Gruner. Gruner good Gruner. Uh, sixth was Viognier. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> that was not, what kind of reaction is that? Uh, fifth, Sauvignon Blanc, your shout. Oh. I was interested because I thought Sauvignon was just going to die in the water because it does polarise no, people. No, no, there are many fellow Sauvignon lovers out Clearly. there. I am sure. Yeah. Um, fourth, Albarino. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, Good yeah, shout. Yeah, yeah. Third, Chenin Blanc. I thought you were going to say Chardonnay then. No, Chenin Blanc. Chenin which, Blanc, which yeah. we didn't mention at all. Yeah, no, no. and uh, But I mean, well, we'll yeah. we can probably discuss it. We can. We? Um, um, second. I know what you're going to say. Well, do you? Because I think, well, okay, um, what are the top two? Chardonnay and Riesling. Yeah, you're right. Okay, but which one? <sighs> it, this was so close. And these two were streets ahead of the rest. Literally really? double the really? Yeah. really? These, these were both way out um, I'm going to go for, uh, well, I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to say Riesling second and Chardonnay first. Wrong way around. Oh. Riesling came first in this poll wow. of favourite top Never. three wow. white grape prices. That's surprising. Only by a very fine margin, but Riesling and Chardonnay way out in front. Excellent, excellent. Okay, okay. So, that is really fascinating. Well, we can discuss that later. But before we get into this, I think we should hear from the boss 
the big man. Dr. J- oh, Dr. J. We're going to call him Dr. J. But- Dr. J, because I can't <laughs> pronounce his name, no. José Vuyamo. Good morning. My name is José Vuyamo. Um, I live in Switzerland. I'm a grape geneticist. And my uh, expertise is in grape DNA profiling. Sounds absolutely fascinating, Jose. Thank you. Um, now, your book, Wine Grapes, uh, which you co-authored with uh, Jantis Robinson and Julia Harding, uh, which is an absolutely amazing book, covers uh, 1,368, if I'm not wrong, varieties, making wine in commercial quantities. Now, uh, how many of those, do you know how many of those offhand are, are white grape varieties? And also, how many vine varieties do you estimate there are in total making wine in non-commercial uh, quantities all around the world? Well, I must confess that we didn't do the statistics of white and red grape varieties in the book. And and, uh, I would say by by your rule of thumb, I would say it's 50-50 right now. And total, we have no idea how many grape varieties are cultivated in the world, including those that are sleeping in grape collections, including those that are not yet identified. If you think of vineyards, old vineyards in Portugal, for example, or in Greece, they still need to be studied by ampelography, which is the science studying the, the grapes. Ampelos in Greek is, is, is the grape, grape vine. So there's still a lot of work to do. And if we include also the table grapes, that means the grapes that you eat and you cannot make wine out of it. And you include also the, the rootstocks, which are the, the um, plant material that you use to graft the European vine on it. And the rootstocks mostly come from America and they're resistant to phylloxera. So if you include all of it, we are between 6,000 and 10,000 grape varieties in the world. We don't have any uh, precise figure for that. Talking about diversity, is this a good thing? Is it a good thing for wine that we've got all this profusion of grape varieties? Because I'm sure a lot of people look at it and they think this is just too much, it's too confusing. There is a a trend since a few decades to go back to the original grape varieties in each region. Um, Many wine regions, if you think of Italy in the 80s, went through this uh, fashion of planting what we call international varieties. Uh, Well, most of them are not international. They they are just French, like Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and Southern, they're French. They're not international. Um, But then they, they realized that the varieties that were cultivated by their grandparents had value. And of course, it's a good thing if we have contributed to this interest in obscure and ancient and forgotten grape varieties with wine grapes and all the other works I did. Well, we're happy. I'm happy for that. And also, in, in, in terms of facing climate change, I think it's one of the solution is to go back to the varieties that have been around since the Middle Ages. And they have gone through a lot of different climates. And they have the plasticity, the elasticity to face the next climate change much better than the variety you just planted a few years ago or 10 or 20 years ago. So, yes, it is very important. We observe, I observed uh, an interest in these varieties all over the world, in ancient world, in new world. And I hope it's not only a fashion and that it will last forever. Here, here, well said, um, especially in the fight against climate change. These things are really important and it's wonderful to have those choices. And a lot of our choices were quite um, uh, niche, I think, if you have people mentioning lots of niche varieties, which has been wonderful for, for us to learn about and become more familiar with. Um, so just to, just to recap on our highly unscientific survey uh, on social media, the top five grapes that uh, came up were Riesling, Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc, Albarino and Sauvignon Blanc. Maybe not too many surprises there. But then the next six were quite interesting too. We had Viognier, Grunefeldlina, Semillon, Sirtico, and then Furmint and Palomino tied for 10th. For um, any comments about that, those sort of findings? That's, that's a difficult question. I, I, could, I could give a, a masterclass on all of these grapes, maybe one hour for each grape. So it's very difficult. Yeah, I'm, sure you, yeah. I'm sure you could and it would be fascinating. But, but, but since you focus on white grape varieties, maybe I, I make a general comment about mm. white grape varieties because, because people might not uh, have in mind how it can appear in the evolution. The, the wild grapevine from which every cultivated variety comes from uh, originated was first domesticated in the Middle East and it was red berried. White berried appeared later in the evolution. Uh, 
Uh, really? And so so we, we know that, do we? The, 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 the first yeah, wild we, grapes were, were red. Yeah, yeah. We, we know that and we know how the white grapes appeared. It's just an accident. It's a mutation that can happen in many grape varieties. For example, if you ask the simple question, Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, for any one grower, any amateur, they would say it's three different grape varieties. And I say, no, it's one and the same grape variety that had accidents, had mutations. Once it mutated into Pinot Gris, once into Pinot Blanc. And we know exactly the process, how it happened. It's through short pieces of DNA called retrotransposons. And this one is named Gret1, nothing to do with Greta Thunberg. It's Gret1, it was before her. And it inserts itself into the DNA, into the genome, randomly. And if it does its insertion in the gene that is responsible for the color, for the anthocyanins, then it turns from red to white. It happened with Pinot, it happened with uh, different varieties, with Cabernet Sauvignon as well. We, we know some white Cabernet Sauvignon. And also it can happen the other way. We have Chasla, which is the most famous white grape variety in, in Switzerland, which is a table grape and wine grape. It has a uh, um, red mutation. Savagnin has a red mutation and so on. So these colors can change. I was fascinated to read about Savagnin in, in wine grapes. Um, and the fact that, and correct me if I'm wrong, that Gewürztraminer is essentially a mutation of Savagnin uh, Rosé or Savagnin, the, the colored version of Savagnin. And it's just an aromatic mutation of, of Savagnin rather than an individual variety in its, own, in its own right. Yes, it's a double mutation because Savagnin is orig originally white, Savagnin Blanc, uh, called Traminer. It had a color mutation called um, Tramina uh, Red or Savagna Rose. And then an aromatic mutation. Gewürz means spice in German. So an aromatic mutation on top of it that gives it a Muscat-like flavor. Nothing to do with Muscat, but Muscat-like flavor. And I, I always fight against this expression, the, the Tramina family or the Savagna family. It's not a family. It's not a family. Family is father. Uh, mother, brothers, sisters, cousins. No, it's one and the same variety that is so old that it has accumulated a lot of mutations, one for the color, one for the, for the aroma, one for the, the, the yields, uh, and, and so on. So it's one and the same very old variety. And this variety is fascinating because it had a lot of influence on the uh, European viticulture. We know through DNA that it is the parent, the genitor, of very, very important varieties, not least. Sauvignon Blanc is a child of Savagnin. Chenin Blanc is a child of Savagnin. Gewürz, uh, Grüner Wettliner is a child of Savagnin. And uh, what else I had? Oh, Verdejo on Madeira is also a child of, Sav of Savagnin Blanc, which had a huge influence in the world. So this is, I find this fascinating. We're not talking about children's parents. We're talking about original things, which are just almost accumulated baggage and, and, and changes and mutations that then can become completely different wines. So obviously Pinot Gris and Pinot Noir, it's hard to think of them as the same sort of thing because they make such different wine styles, don't they? Yes, because of the anthocyanins, which are part of, uh, of, the, of the polyphenols, which are the tannins. So it changes the structure, it changes the, the taste and, and the, the impression you have when you swallow the wine. But if you look at the, at the vines themselves, you look at Pinot Noir and Pinot Blanc before they are bearing the, the, the fruits, usually you cannot tell which one is the Pinot Noir, which one is Pinot Blanc. And do you think in the future, uh, grape vines will continue mutating, will end up with even more potential uh, styles of wine, or will it be that we can only manage so many and so the overall total won't really change much over time? So there are two ways for the, the grape diversity to develop. One way is through the accumulation of mutation, and any organism is mutating all the time. If you do the complete DNA sequence of my left thumb and my right thumb, you will find differences. Because to, to create these two thumbs, you have hundreds of thousands of cell divisions, and each, we don't even know, each 100,000 cell division, you, you have the chance to have a mutation. So yes, mutations happen all the time. Most of them go unnoticed because they have no influence 
on the, the morphology, we don't see them. But those that we see are quite impressive, like, like the color. And the other way is through crossings, spontaneous or deliberate crossings between two parent vines. It used to happen naturally all the time in the vineyards until the end of the 19th century. But since then, we have very nice vineyards regimented with, 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 uh, with lines and anything that would fall in the middle would be torn apart. And that seed that would fall in the middle could be a new variety and a new interesting one. But we don't let this happen anymore. I have to ask this, sorry. What would your top three whites be? <laughs> well, um, I will not go for mainstream varieties. Good, good. <laughs> and being Swiss, I need to mention a Swiss one a Swiss variety that I like very much, which is Arvin, it's also called Petit Arvin. Uh, it's an old variety from the Valais region where I'm living, where I was born, is the most important wine producing region in the country, where we have a lot of, of uh, indigenous grape varieties. And Arvin is a white grape variety, the, one of the most interesting because it has complex aromas of, of uh, grapefruit, of citrus, um, of mango, and it has a good structure with a saltiness at the end, which is quite unique. An another one that I like very much, uh, that is really, really rare, is a grape from the Azores. And it, the name is Terrantes do Pico. They would pronounce it much faster, like Terrantes do Pico, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult to get that. I mean, it's like tasting um, Riesling from the Atlantic. It's fantastic. And a third one that is very obscure, but I'm only mentioning those that I like very much. Mm. So the last one would be Voskehat. Voskehat is a white grape. Bless you, from, bless you. Is a white grape from Armenia. Ah. It's a very old traditional white grape variety from Armenia. It's uh, made by a few producers. My favorite is my friend Zorik Garibian with Zora Wines that makes this fantastic white wine that is historical and indigenous to Armenia. Jose, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you, my pleasure. So whites are just an accidental mutation of reds? Yeah, yeah, it's a, so they are a kind of oh. child of fortune, you know. White, it was always the, the, the initial... Uh, great vine, according to Jose, great. was was red. Mm. Uh, so I guess it's probably a bit like blondes, like you. You are you are an accidental mutation, but <laughs> but a, a glorious brunette. but a glorious one. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you say said that it. quickly. Um, and moving on, I, I, didn't you love his his three options? I think they're fantastic. Well, uh, I'm going to be completely honest. I'd never heard of any of them. <laughs> okay, Seriously, so I was Arvin Turnchurch de Bucco, as he said, and Voskiat. Voskiat. None of us are going to pretend to know that. K E H A T. No, just A T. I think. A T. Just A T. Uh, also found in Azerbaijan. Oh my goodness! Uh, I checked oh, it in wine grapes. Go. There we go. Uh, but also the fact there are ten thousand grape varieties, and mm, maybe more mm. in collections, and and then constant mutations mean yeah, we're it's getting more and more. Fascinating, I mean, wasn't it? How Mike? That's incredible. That is incredible. But I suppose it just it talks about what kind of plant the grapevine is. Yeah. And, and also he said that you know cells are constantly mutating. Yes. All of us are thumbs. I'm never going to look at my thumbs in the same way again. <laughs> but, you know, interestingly, um, some stats as well. The OIV uh, said that apparently 13 one, three grape varieties cover more than a third of the world's vineyards. So even though we've got 10,000 or whatever, or, you know, 1,300 in wine grapes, it's quite consolidated. And apparently mm. uh, 33%, so a third, uh, cover more than half of the world's vineyard. And the most uh, widely planted grape varieties in the world, the most widely planted wine grape varieties, Cabernet Sauvignon. And then you've got Merlot, Tempranillo. Iren is the first white. And then Chardonnay. Wow. Then Syrah, Garnacha. And then Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, and, and Pinot Noir. Right, I, th I think at this point we should say, um, being the academic in the household, you are the one who has done, quite clearly, we can see already, all the research on these, these grape I, varieties. I have you got, bit, down, you, you got overexcited, as we've said already. I've dived down a rabbit and, hole. Uh, and you <laughs> have spent hours yep. researching these grape varieties. So I'm just going to kind of slightly listen to what you've got to tell me. I feel I'm going to learn a lot over the, over the next I really, few minutes. I really, uh, I, I can't believe that's what's going to happen. <laughs> 
<laughs> it never happens in our relationship, so I don't really... But anyway, let's give it a try. Let's so let's begin, start at the yeah. beginning. Yeah. Riesling. Riesling. Top choice. So um, why do we love it? Why do we why love it? Why did it come choice? Well, I mean, to be, to be fair, choice? it has. It does have quite um, quite a lot of influ- influential advocates. Um, I mean, yeah. if you think of Hugh Johnson, Jancis yeah. Robinson, mm-hmm. um, and it makes... Yeah, wines of incredible um, complexity and an excitement and well, I'm using that word again. Goodness, um, but you know the, the 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 tense, the nature of a, of a great riesling um, is is un, probably you know unparalleled. Well, it's got high acidity. It ages well. It can produce wines from sweet and delicate to to, fu- to, to actually really full bodied and 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 they age amazingly, don't they? You know, yeah. Um, yeah. I remember reading Hugh Johnson who tasted one from from the fifteen hundreds, didn't he? Fifteen fifties or yeah. something, and he said it was still really really good. Isn't you know, that incredible, I know. incredible. I mean, five hundred years. Yeah. Thought, yeah. And, and Marcella tweeted in saying her three top white grape choices were Riesling, Riesling, Riesling. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was quite a nice little touch. Lovely what about us? Wait, okay, so uh, what are our f- uh, favourite styles? Okay, um, well, wh- what would you say? Well, I have to say, I have to say at this point that Riesling slightly gives me nightmares, um, and that is for a reason you well know. Well, in in my Master of oh, Wine God, exam, yes. yeah, at the first morning, always the worst time. I sat down, and the first eight wines out of twelve, twelve on which wines. my future depended. <laughs> were all Riesling. <laughs> so as much as I love Riesling, and I yeah. did actually sort of enjoy it. It's giving me nasty nasty. It just gives me flashbacks. flashbacks. It just gives me flashbacks. And, and, I, and by the end, I thought, I've made, I've mucked this all up. But anyway, I mean, and there were all different styles in there as well. So, I mean, so some, if you were to pick then now, yeah. your, 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 or maybe the, okay. maybe it was in there, what, what would be it? I love a good dry Australian Riesling. Yeah. Um, that, 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 with a bit of age. Um, yeah. You know, New Zealand, I like mm-hmm. as well, with, you know, bit, often bit, bit, with a bit of sugar in. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not age worthy as well. What yeah. about you? I mean, well, for me, I would say a dry German Riesling, um, the, the kind of new wave of these beautiful dry wines. Now, I know, I know, traditionally the German wines, German Riesling is sweet, um, and they are incredible. But I love these mm. this new wave. I think mm. everybody should be trying them because they're they're fantastic. Do you know what my favorite, one of my favorite ever wines was that I tasted? Wines, 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 like all all time. Go on. Uh, it was when I visited Austria. It was an Austrian Riesling Schmaragd, at 1990, from the Wachau. It had been aged in large oak vats and taken pretty much straight out of there. Uh, made by the slightly mad and utterly lovely people at Nikolai Hof. Oh, yeah. Uh, lovely yeah. Christina Sars. Um, this is, this is, yes, this is And I went back to my tasting now. notes and it, I'd, I'd written, this was the best tasting I've ever had. I was quite young at the time, but still. And I, I described that I wine praise. as like all of the world's great white wines rolled into one and biodynamic to boot biodynamic yeah but it was amazing yeah so yeah, obviously you yeah. know that, that shaped me a little bit now, now one person said which which both of us found really um you know difficult to understand at first we, we know now somebody said riesling as their favorite grape because i'm a marxist <laughs> Yeah. And we kind of went, really? Yeah. Anyway, our friend and lovely author Anne Kriebel, uh, she authored the book The Wines of Germany. She explained that Marx was actually, Karl Marx was, um, he, when he was a journalist, a, a young man, he was very much um, a supporter of the Moselle wine growers. Mm, so yeah. that is and why. apparently there's been a book written about it. Yeah. yeah. I think it's in German. But anyway. We won't uh, be reading it. was an interesting, then. interesting tangent <laughs> sideline. But I think it's important to say that um, not everyone loves Riesling, do they? No, no. And, uh, no. <laughs> it's a leading question. It's a leading question because we had a comment from Nick Darlington, and we're going to hear this in a moment. Mm. Uh, we love Nick. He's a highly regarded member of the UK wine trade, great friend of ours, founder of Red Squirrel and co-founder of the import of the, wine, the Graft Wine Company. He's known for his sound judgment, mm. uh, forward mm-hmm. thinking, but he's not usually particularly controversial, is no, he? No, no. Not particularly. Which is it was interesting when he said the following. Now, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love a great reasoning as much as the next person. But maybe because it's still relatively misunderstood and unloved among the wider public, that to the wine trade, proclaiming your love for reasoning, waxing lyrical about reasoning, has become something of a dog whistle. It's a bit like Muse for music fans. I mean, no one actually really likes Muse, do they? But people will say they like Muse because it's quite cool to say you like Muse. Maybe Riesling is the muse of wine grapes. Thank you, Nick. Um, We'd love to have comments on this. Um, No offence to Muse, who neither of us know. (laughs) <laughs> we're so uncool we're so we uncool. don't even know what we're meant to know to be cool <laughs> that's how uncool we are 
<laughs> hey ho, we, we we we're happy with that. Um, but and, and, you know, I know what you mean about Riesling, Nick. Um, yes, uh, I, I did put it in my top three, and then I thought, oh, do you know what? It's just the typical thing that that people in the wine trade do say. I love Riesling. Well, hang on, so you're um, sa- hang on, you're saying so you're saying you are you want to change? No, no, because I then after I was put on the spot, and then I actually had time to myself to think. I thought I, I thought a lot about it, and thought, would I really put Riesling in there? I, I still think I would. I, I really do um but there's another great variety that that is so much more left of field and that Jose talks about that yeah. I suddenly thought that should be in there and that is Sauvignon right so okay so you've you got Riesling and Sauvignon you've only got room for one other one yeah well we'll talk about it later yeah, okay. uh, well you can't have four I'm just <laughs> well, saying that now. we'll, we'll talk no, about it later that is cheating <laughs> you will join the the, the, the mug shops of the... right let's move on to Chardonnay mm, all right shall we <laughs> it's probably fair enough um, okay so, so we know don't we from hosting loads of events and yeah. then we talk to a lot of people that that are loads of people absolutely hate, hate Chardonnay. Chardonnay. They cannot abide Chardonnay, won't touch it, yeah. won't have any talk of it. I, I do understand. I sort of I feel their pain, if you like. You know, when you think of some of the Chardonnays that have been made over the years mm. that were just so rich and creamy and, you know, they've got these sort of, yeah. you know, over-oaked. And we're just badly made. Badly we're made. not, you know, yeah. we can mention names, Australia. No, that's unfair. It is unfair. There's been a lot of poor Chardonnay made all over the world. But I think maybe there was... To be fair, there was a time in the 80s and 90s where this style of buttery, sickly, sweet... Sort of brown coloured Chardonnay going into fashion. But, but what we have to remember, I mean, Australia in many ways at the moment is leading the way with Chardonnay. Mm, Some incredible wines being yeah, made. Yeah, yeah. But equally, you know, all Chablis is Chardonnay. You know, virtually every amazing champagne you'll ever drink will have at least some Chardonnay in it. Um, you know, everything made in Burgundy, every white Burgundy that you would ever want to drink. It, you know, I'm sure some people like a little bit of Aligote, but the, the top wines there are all made from Chardonnay. Yeah. You know, they're some of the and most mind-blowing wines in the world. They can be. And I think that, you know, it was interesting to just read the, the Wine Grapes ebook by Kim Anderson um, a couple of years ago, but he said that Chardonnay plantings have trebled, nearly trebled between 1990 and 2010. And a, a, an OIV study in 2017 had it as the fifth most widely planted grape variety, which I've already mentioned. So, so it is you know, popular. It yeah. is popular. Yeah. We know it's popular. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. hopefully now we're getting more sort of fresh styles, I think. Now, yeah. I've got a question for you. Uh, Do you know how many... People, how many babies were named Chardonnay? When? Well, uh, okay. <laughs> I, 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 okay. Today? Uh, in, tw- in 2002. Oh, go uh, on. Go 65 on. 65 you... girls were named Chardonnay. That's just ridiculous, In the UK. Isn't it? You know, apparently, That's according so to the US Parenting website, Baby Centre, uh, girls sh- named Chardonnay saw its usage peak in the 1990s uh, at 47 babies per million. Oh I mean, my what a weird that thought is, is a that? good bit of trivia. Uh, yeah. Good trivia. Uh, uh, but then Parents.com ranked it as the fourth worst baby name of 2019, saying only next level wine mums need consider this one. That, fair enough, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's sort of out of fashion now as a name, going out of fashion as a name. Yeah. Not as a variety. Well, what I was going to ask was, you know, you as a next level wine mum, did you, did you consider that? Uh, what, calling our, our daughter Chardonnay? Mm-hmm. I can't say I did. Okay. No, Here's another no. fact for you. Um, according to legend, uh, Chardonnay owes its popularity to the wife of Emperor Charlemagne, who had white wine grape varieties planted because she was fed up with the red wine stains in his beard. Mm. I was just sorry. I was just thinking. You know, there's a lovely, lovely little um, fact there that was very historical. <laughs> but I was thinking, <laughs> totally do you think? Irrelevant. Do you think David Beckham ever considered calling his daughter Chardonnay? David, we need to hear from you. I mean, this is <laughs> it's becoming clearer and clearer. You are key uh, to the debate about wine, anyway, wine grape let's varieties. Let's move on. Uh, we've got a lot of varieties to talk about. Chenin Blanc, yeah, yeah, that's that's nice that yeah. that's in there. I, I, like I that. love the fact. Third, yeah, a really strong third as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I think a lot of it's due to a lot of love for South Africa. Lovely old vines, Chenins from Swartland. Yeah, but also the Loire, fan, Loire fans. There Charlie. were there were quite a lot of Loire fans as well, which actually surprised yeah. me. I mean, when you think, I mean, another uh, wine style that you know is is got to be in there well it's a style but you know Savigny what an no, amazing people wine. mention that by by name yeah. the area yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, another one which did in- intrigue us was was Palomino wasn't it which we've said you know because it's Absolutely. a pretty dull great variety all things told it is but what it makes i mean in the sense you you know it's the same in that sense with chardonnay to to some extent yes, but really. palomino is is a very much a neutral great variety it's what you do with it and when you think and we we've we've, we've poured ourselves yeah, haven't we, we? we've poured listen, ourselves listen, a little we've taken this, drop we've taken of, this excuse drop of to to bought ourselves a very rare Amontillado uh, from Lustau. Oh, uh, it, is, it is mahogany brown colour and smelling it. Oh my word! It, I mean, it's just it's just does incredible. Does this make you want to put Roasted Palomino nuts. in your top three? It almost does, doesn't it? It almost does. I, I think there's not quite room in my top three, but um, but but it is just just beautiful. Roasted mm. nuts, oh, hazelnuts, walnuts, so nice. some toffee in there. 
Raisins, just delicious. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Well, so well, well. glass okay. of sherry. Right, now we're going to race through a few more. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah, get through, yeah, race yeah. through a few varieties. So, You're uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon can't, Blanc. Can't, can't not mention Sauvignon Blanc. Well, well at least we mentioned it. Move on. <laughs> My, it's my second choice. You just dismissed it. Grunefeld Lina. We, yeah, we yeah, loved, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ferment. Um, but Albilo Real. Albillo Real. Albillo. Albillo. Uh, Real. Big in Ribera del Duero, apparently. Really? Uh, it's a new one. And, and, oh, and elsewhere yeah. in Spain, yeah. La Mancha. Uh, yeah, it was an interesting one to be mentioned. Bacchus. Got mentioned. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, back is very much, uh, you know, an, an English speciality now. Germany yep. first, and English, now, nice now England. Our, our answer of to Sauvignon Blanc. Regional flag wavers in this. It has to be said. <laughs> um, now, Gurk. What on earth is Gurk? G R K. G R K. I don't even know if it's is it is it white or red. I have no idea. I, I just wanted to mention Gurk because Gurk. I wanted to get a great Gurk. variety that had no vowels in its name. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason really for getting this in here. Uh, but apparently anyway. it's from Croatia. Um, Fair enough. Jacquer. Jacquer, we love really the name Jacquer. Didn't know that. Savoie speciality. Yeah, yeah. Making, making light fresh wines. Sort of mountainy wines. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Uh, a lot of this knowledge is coming from wine grapes. So I just let's let's be. Well, let's I be really hope clear. it is. <laughs> Dr. José is our Dr. Is our J, expert. Uh, yeah. And Julia and Janice, thank you. Now, now Savignon, we've talked about a little bit. Savignon. I think mm. it's nice to 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 mention it because you know it, it's mostly in the Jura, isn't it? Mostly. Well, you, well actually, you, it's all I over. Right? Well, you, given what Dr. J said, yeah. you know, it's all over. It, wasn't he fascinating about it? Absolutely. I mean, it, I mean the fact it's so old. Yeah, so it, old. Yes. And, but it, the point is that it's almost... Savignon is the same thing. It's just Savignon with mutations. Mm. So you know, it's the, the parent, the, as it were, or the, you know, yeah. the, the, the starting block for, for, so, for so many... many even so, Cabernet Sauvignon, so, I couldn't believe that. Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet Sauvignon, Chenin Blanc, Petit Monsang, Silvana, Grunefeltlina and Gewurz, they all come from Savagna. Wow. It's just an amazing, crazy thought. And I mean, who, who's really ever given it much thought? Um, you know, I know uh, the reason I, I put it in there was because I suddenly thought, what white wines had blown me away when I've gone to a tasting? And I thought, I know. And I went back to the, the ones, a couple, two or three, you know, in the last 10 years. And I thought, gosh, they, they are all... Savignon. Um, so that was mm, why it suddenly... That's very, very yeah. interesting, isn't it? Bizarre. Um, I, had, I hadn't really put so that So Savignon, together. the big daddy. So there what we about, go. What about know, these? I would just, well, I, it yeah, was yeah. imported sure. to Australia as well. Uh, it, was, it was sold as Albarino. And oh. Australian growers brought it thinking, I'm going to plant some Albarino. Actually, it was Savignon. But do you know what? I'm thinking, I'm betting a lot of those now aren't quite so worried about the mistake. No. I mean, what, I wouldn't worry at all if I had Savignon yeah. in my vineyard and could make some wines like those Jura wines. I mean, goodness me, that that's they're incredible. Anyway, try Jura wines mm. made from Savignon if yeah. you get the chance, if you haven't done already. Yeah. It's, it's They are really interesting. Mm. They're characterful. They're not for the faint-hearted, but amazing. Some Van Jaune or yeah. the... Uh, well, anyway, so next have up, a look. Next have up, a look, look keep them up. moving. Malvasia Istarska. Is that Croatian? It's Croatian. It is um, emphatic white variety. It is Ooh. described in, in wine grapes, suggested by Caroline Gilby. I, I, it is amazing if you get the chance to try yeah. it. It is, you know, it's not loads of it, but it's, you know, it's a really fantastic white variety. Uh, what about you? You you got quite excited about. <laughs> I keep saying excited, don't I? But you have been excited this week. Ribola gialla. Ribola gialla, absolutely. Mainly because I think mm. it's one of those ones that was a total discussion. You know how some things, someone recommends something and you think, oh, okay, all right, I'll, I'll give it a try out of dutiful loyalty. And it totally blows your mind you, when you're expecting it not to. So that this was a great variety for me. I remember that a while ago where I was just blown away. Where, where do we find this, Ribola gialla? Well, mainly it's a sort of really old ancient white variety, actually, from the Italy sort of Slovenia border. So Fiuli and into Slovenia and around that area. Mm-hmm. But apparently it's, it's ancient. So, so the earliest mention of it, according to Wine Grapes, was in 1296 when Pope Boniface uh, settled a dispute between the Bishop of Trieste and, and, a, and a, a monastery in Venezia about the selling of a wine called Rabola. And then apparently, <laughs> I like this, the gift by the city of Udine in 1299, one pig, one cow, 170 litres of rab- rabiola, as they called it then, and some bread. <laughs> Would you like that gift if I gave you that for your next anniversary? I, I like that. I like that. I like the fact it's 170 <laughs> litres. You only get one pig, one cow, and one probably, presumably one loaf of bread, but you get 170 yeah. litres of wine. But the wine can make, the reason I think it's fantastic, it often you use skin contact or funky winemaking practices, but the wine can be so complex and just otherworldly. It, it's genuinely... It, it's really, exciting. it is great when you do find those those mm. kind of rice. Now, the one that I wanted to mention, because I had never, ever ever heard of it. I didn't even go kind of, I think I've heard of that. <laughs> Timor Rasso. Timor Rasso. Timor Rasso. Again, yeah, it was Italian. Yeah, yeah. And a, but apparently, again, according to Wine Grapes, um, 
very, very rare. So very little of it planted, which probably explains why, why, I've never why heard we of have it. never heard of it. Um, well, maybe I'm but, just so it's almost lost, but now it's being um, replanted and revived, almost back from the dead. And this is a common story with white, with, with grape varieties. They, they almost suddenly, Viognier was the same, wasn't it? Almost mm. got lost. Mm. And then it was replanted and championed. So, uh, and what, what are we looking for, looking at in a Timorasso? What kind of style of wine? Uh, well, again, according to white grapes, it's, it's it's complex but nutty and creamy, fresh acidity, delicate minerality, surprising longevity. Oh, hey, we need to try some. We need right, anybody right. got any Timorasso they can they let's, can send let's our get way? Some Timorasso. Uh, right. So, okay, summing up, if there were one white grape variety here you'd like to see more of around mm. the world, what would it be? The Sauvignon. Everybody mm. knows I'm going to say that. It, 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 it really, okay. really, yeah, okay. yeah. Presuming, assuming it can be grown and made into wine as good as the wines of the Jura. Well, that's true. Um, which is a big if. About because, you. What about you? Uh, I would be ooh, um, either a Sirtico, mm-hmm. which and we've discussed that with South Africa and Australia, yeah. or Ribolla Gialla. Oh, Italian. Yeah, Greek yeah, or Italian. Italian and Greek. So uh, okay, brilliant. So. <clears throat> Summing up, have we changed our top three white grape variety choices by the end of this? Uh, I'm going to cheat. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, go on then. So I've, I've still got Cheater Chardonnay work. Sauvignon Blanc, mm. but I am going to have a joint third now. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody even, knows exactly what I'm going to say. More lame than I'm all gonna the cheaters go who try to get 12. Riesling Sauvignon. Sauvignon oh Riesling. God. This is not, you're giving everyone cop. Have you forced cheat. me? I'm going to put Sauvignon in there. I, I have forced you and there you go. Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc, Sauvignon from, from Susie. I, I I don't think I'd be changing my top three. Really? Did no. you have a top three? I thought it was top yeah, Chard- five. Chardonnay, Riesling, Oh, Asitica. yes, of course you did, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, what Chardonnay, about Chardonnay, Riesling, Assetico. Excellent. This is obviously where we're heading. Have we decided what the best white wine grape is? I know. Do you? I do. All right, that's, that question was supposed to throw you. So, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm just decisive. Mm-hmm, Today's a decisive day. Yep. Chardonnay. Do you know I Dave, David, are you listening? <laughs> I'm going to have to agree with you. I'm going to have to agree with you. You can't. Right, no, right, no, 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 no. This is the end of the podcast if you if you agree with me. I know, ah! I know, I know. That, that's a worrying Where we moment. Are, Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Right, so um, the other thing we have to do is, we may have to revisit, is is the worst three white grape varieties Ooh. as well. So this Ooh. was a suggestion by Mike Lang. Thank you, Mike. And Dave, incidentally, off that, suggested this could be a kind of wine therapy, you know, like sort of getting stuff off your chest, which I think is a quite a nice idea. We're just going to give a, a little taster of what we might, areas we might go into with this. I'm not going to do it now, but I'm going to ask you for one, one variety that would be in your top three worst white grapes. Mm, what would it be? I'm going to get so much black about this. <laughs> but I have to put in there to be true to myself Viognier Viognier mm. Viognier okay oh. that was our sixth <laughs> favourite white variety just so you're aware the thing is that you know if it's made into the most amazing wine in the world you know from a beautiful Condria I totally agree heavenly but so often it's not so it's there I'm afraid okay I've nailed my mask, my colours to the mask you have and, and what um, are you going to put in there you're welcome to all the flack I might put in Torrentes as well but anyway for another time okay why don't you offend a few more people <laughs> Sorry, Any other countries? <laughs> <laughs> Alienate. Um, okay, well, my, I think, you know, one of my worst would be Gewürztraminer. Ooh. I'll be up there. I'll Ooh. be interesting. And which is interesting because... That's that Sauvignon. It, it, exactly. So so it's a clone of Sauvignon. I love mm. Sauvignon and I hate Gewürztraminer. Mm. And mm. Um, it was also, incidentally, the 12th favourite variety in our list, Gewürz. Not quite as high as mine then. So anyway, having alienated everyone... Um, Please do write in. <laughs> please, please send us your comments. <laughs> tell us we're wrong. Just, just contact care. us to tell us we're wrong. We, we'd love that. Uh, or, or indeed air your views if you have some constructive comments. Um, pick us up on our ignorance or just, just rail about Riesling. You know, please do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Carry on the chat on social media. We're Susie Ann Peter on Instagram or I'm Wine Schools and she's Susie Barry on, on Twitter. Uh, or you can send us a message via, via SpeakPipe. Now we may revisit this theme. I'm, I'm sure you're not surprised <laughs> to hear that. Either with the, the worst three whites or or maybe the top three reds. Mm. Um, you know, if you okay. want to, just let us know which you would prefer because we are happy to go with what whatever you'd like us to do. But until then, thanks for listening. Stay safe and cheers.